you know, the other 100 projects that I always talk about but never deliver on. Expect those to be released soon. Yes. No, I I was I, uh, wait, wait, wait for a second. Yeah, I was I was I was just napping. No, no, no. You you. No, I I would have wanted to to to, to wake up. Just 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 tell me what what's up. What? Wait. What? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry. For a, for a second, I thought you said that I haven't uploaded in over a month. Uh, you meant I haven't uploaded in over a week, right? No. N come on, I have to check. That's not true. Don't you think that I know my own lore? We made a pact with Lucifer. I make a video, he gives me 10,000 subscribers. I make another video, he makes he, he gives me another 10,000. That's that's the deal. And uh, if I don't upload for a month, uh, the world is going to end or something. You know that whole deal sounded like a fourth wall breaking angry video game nerd copy thingy? You know, I'm gonna be ready, just give me five seconds, okay? Here we go, we are so back. Okay, don't panic, the sun just went down and I have plenty of time until sunrise. Also, I have an almost finished sketch that I can just add a little bit of rendering to. Yeah, um, as I said, just a little bit of rendering. Yeah, I would say it's about like 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 85% done. So I will just fix up a few little things and, and then it is just ready to go, just trust me. Hey, this is me from the editing room, which is the same room I'm just editing now. I have to interrupt with some info because I messed up the pacing of this video. Today I'm making a piece of fan art featuring Wednesday Adams from Wednesday 2022 and Madison Montgomery from American Horror Story. Your standard ship art, uh, mine is just going to be a little bit more out there than most. Now let's get back to past me talking about technical struggles. I bid you welcome or welcome back to my least problematic piece so far both in execution and subject matter no seriously here's a wall of warnings please uh, ignore them and watch the video regardless you know i i value watch time much more than your mental well-being and get ready for some fandom brain rat romanticization you know that stuff that might get me some allegations uh, some more serious than others and you can leave them all in the comments because i love comments because the algorithm loves comments and therefore i can infect more people with my brain worms huh, this video is going pretty unhinged so far um guess what i will say amazing of course i have to talk about the thing i messed up on this piece first before messing up and fixing many other things my original idea was to use the speed paint slash scandering slash the search slash what are you doing what brush is that method i used the trusty old rectangle brush with a color jitter on i'm pretty sure that's not how it's called in krita it's something like huge change on razi stroke setting and i totally abandoned that method sometime in and obviously i got the worst of both words that way when you do it with just the messy silhouettes you are saving yourself from having to be so precise and you gain a lot of momentum and expression and color variations while having a sketch makes you really think through all of it and making you create the most accurate result so i just grabbed both of those things and i smashed them into the garbage can i messed it all up from the beginning and i was still fixing basic issues like 17 hours in issues like the proportions of the human body and uh, this way i rendered multiple parts of the characters multiple times you know just for maximum efficiency 
consistency. Yes, it was one of those pieces that started small and started growing eventually, like my pieces do on a regular basis. It started as an expressive little doodle and it grew into this messy, half-broken piece that, among many things, made Madison look like she was resurrected by the totally unrelated Charles Montgomery, also known as the drug addict Frankenstein wannabe who's been dead for 87 years by that point. But I feel like I told this entire story way too many times, so let's not get tangled up in the technical issues once again, and let's focus on the piece itself, which is a fan art crossover, because I just can't stop making random fan art pieces instead of uh, doing much more important things that I should be working on. So who are we painting today? A random fandom ship that I randomly thought of and was speechless over the fact that nobody else did. I mean, yes, I found this one TikTok edit of Marissa Montgomery and Wednesday Adams, and I didn't even find a proper crossover on AO3 between American Horror Story and Wednesday. We have stuff like this, but that's about it. I cannot be the only person who sees the parallel between these two, right? Maybe I just have a thing for angsty, magic school, queerbait queens, which uh, sounds pretty bad, so let's skip that part before uh, you come to some questionable conclusions about me. So who are they? Wednesday Adams, specifically her version from the Tim Burton slash Jenna Ortega series, which is the one I found to be the most interesting and most developed version of the character. A member of the grimly wholesome Adams family, borderline sadistic god icon who is uh, an obsessed detective story writer and self-appointed detective herself in this version. After learning about the mysterious murder spree around Nevermore Academy, a school for supernatural creatures, finding that both the local sheriff and the headmistress seemingly know too much about the whole situation, and getting hit by a prophecy about herself, Wesley decides to get to the bottom of the whole mystery. Her story is a pretty straightforward coming-of-age story with a twist where it's really focused on her learning to trust and value people around her, which is generally part of every main character from the beginning, at least in most other media, and also to choose the morally right path no matter how many people you need to target with uh, death threats that everyone just ignores in this universe for some reason. Then we have Madison Montgomery from American Horror Story who is pretty much Emma Roberts playing an awful version of herself, or more like just herself based on who you ask. A former child actress, recovering drug addict, repeated trauma survivor who at one point becomes but doesn't only stay the mean girl arriver character type. She was found out to be a witch after killing a movie director in her anger and was sent to New Orleans to learn more about her powers in her new coven, only to get involved in some unusually complicated teenage drama, some conflict both within and outside of the coven, and of course to get through her own personal journey and trials on her way to figuring out who she is going to become in the end. She was written as an entertainingly hateable borderline anti-hero, but uh, then as we both learn about her past and see things happen to her through the series, we got to know how she ended up the way she is and it's hard to talk about her story without spoilers and why exactly I say that she becomes a likable and relatable character. I have another project featuring Madison in the works where I will talk about her more in detail. Now I will only mention that a huge part of her story is being a survivor of abuse of many kinds but also being forever changed by them, possibly for the worse, to the point where she spends a huge chunk of her screen time being uncertain about who she is going to be in the end and how she is going to impact the people she is an ally to. Wait for a second. I think I messed up my makeup. Little intermission incoming because I forgot to do my eyebrows. Okay, at this point I decided to put some of my eyeliner on my eyebrows because I originally wanted that, but then looking back at the footage I feel that it made me look worse. <laughs> Needs more experimentation. Yeah, I was thinking about why I looked so weird. And I think that was because I forgot the eyebrows. Okay, intermission over. I see Madison as a very similar character to Wednesday, but much more mature and grounded in reality. Now, would the two of them be a good influence on each other? I doubt it. Would they be a toxic power couple and a menace to everyone around them? That sounds more likely. But 
only after they try literally killing each other a few times. The way I see it, they would both see aspects of themselves in each other, along with things they both hate and admire and would find more mutual understanding, definitely more than how much they see in others. The forever cold and distant fans, they would be the first to call out the awful nature of Madison, who would immediately talk down on Wednesday for having the slightest hint of morality. Then they would have their bonding experience over self-centered hatred towards most of their surroundings, their ambitions as a performer and as a writer respectively, their interest in the darker side of magic, maybe just over the hint of some companionship and the ability to relate to each other, like Wednesday understanding Madison's trauma in exchange for being taken seriously. That is essentially my rationalized answer, and my equally if not more impactful reason is angsty Emma Roberts character and angsty Jenna Ortega character go smooch. I mean, not just smooch, but angsty, self-destructive, Toxic queer smooch. Borderline pro ship? I mean, after some of the stuff I've seen on, on a regular basis uh, in fandom, um, this is pretty tame. I could just be dishonest and not mention the obvious they are hot argument, just understand that there is more to it. The same way there is more to both characters individually, with Madison being the obviously more developed and complex out of the two, and hopefully we are going to see some of that in the following seasons of Wednesday if they ever get created. Now the background didn't start the way it did, um, just trust me on this one, it really sounds random with the satanist aesthetic, but it's really an alternative version of both characters where they are not just Godseer and Angsty Witch, but they are either involved with dark forces or something adjacent to that, they might have just uh, looked at Pinterest and, and uh, took some interior design suggestions and ideas. I originally wanted something mostly abstract inspired by this one shot of Madison with that red block in the background and with the relatively strong indoors lighting. I just kept adding to it, you know, and beyond the pentacle and the Baphomet statue I added some random pictures to look vintage, including a big black and white group photo, a set portrait that kind of uh, resembles Wednesday, could be Morticia, and an upside down crucifix and some butterflies, and there is even a picture of the Jersey Devil, allegedly the Jersey Devil, from the intro of American Horror Story Coven, I just literally took that little frame from the intro and translated it into an image on the wall. By the way, that element with the bright and dark hair having the contrast with their opposite, due to the backgrounds on each side, wasn't intentional. <laughs> I totally nailed it subconsciously at multiple places, in fact. I know it's not a big deal, but I realized it after uh, I already made those points of contrast and it was a nice surprise to myself. As you know, it's a nice composition element to, to place the things in the picture, like a silhouette of the character and the background in a way that they contrast with each other as much as possible, so they really feel separated and you give those little hints to the viewer where they are exactly located in space. What was totally intentional though was toning down the contrast and the elements in the back for a stronger aerial perspective effect, stronger than real life I mean, that creates this hazy, almost magical effect without using any fancy fog brushes. Hmm. The sun is about to rise, so I better hurry up a little bit. I feel if anyone knows my works, they will know that I always make crying pieces. Even if I don't want to, they just uh, start crying when I leave the room. I mean, I add tears because they always look better, of course. <laughs> so a late addition was adding some black mascara tears to Madison's face, and sometime later I made Wednesday's eyes watery as well. If anyone told me they look worse because of it, I don't just disagree, I'm unable to understand or relate. Now that I touched the topic of themes and feeling, yes, as I mentioned it before, this piece is a somewhat of a satanist reimagining of both characters. People from the outside looking in could associate both of them with a team like that, but in fact, Wednesday and the whole Adams family was never quite involved in any of that, at least not explicitly. The closest thing I can think of is how the 2022 Wednesday series made her fight against an antagonist who was based on a Christian religious zealots of New England, like the persecutors of the Salem witch trials. Madison, on the other hand, actually fought against Satanists during the events of American Horror Story Apocalypse, including including 
Anton Lavey, <laughs> at least a version of him who was a theistic satanist and a literal devil worshipper, who was a real person author of the halfway plagiarized satanic bible and founder of yet another christian uh, conservative denomination i'm sorry the church of satan for the record as a satanist myself i respect him as a pioneer but hate the man as a person along with the church of satan i shall make a video about that whole topic one day she also fought against the literal antichrist and the devil by extension in uh, spoiler alert too late american horror story apocalypse the season they totally wasted by making the Antichrist into a villain, despite American Horror Story turning all tropes inside out every other time, so I would have expected him to be actually at least a complex character. Um, anyways, back to this piece. You may say that this piece was meant to promote things like the romanticization of substance abuse because that ex-drug addiction induced chain smoker habit isn't sticking by itself. Satanism and the occult. Because while unfortunately contrary to popular belief, depicting symbols and themes won't bring them to reality. But looking at this, you can be pretty sure that the creator doesn't really have a, a natural stance on them to say the least. Toxic queer relationships because in no possible way or form can these two people be a good influence on each other at least through the lens of what most people are looking for. And don't you lie to me and say that you don't find it much more appealing this way. Dubiously problematic age gaps. I made that chart instead of explaining it to make it shorter. They have an age gap somewhere between 3 and 12 years depending on how you consider start this timeline. And number five, knowing the traits of the characters, romanticization of mental illness, or sadism, or narcissism, or drug addiction, or practicing the occult. Just some really serious pro-shipper vibes as the kids say these days. Well, it does all of those and I'm leaving it up to you to decide whether or not you agree with any of those messages. Just keep in mind how they make you feel all crying and succumbing to their self-destructive habits while bonding over hatred and angst, stealing your heart, dear viewer, in the process. Yeah, this video sounded a little bit uh, too diabolical here and there. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm not seeing that I went too far. I'm just telling you I'm happy about it and let's just hope this vibe stays even after the editing. Hey, this is me from the editing room, which is the same room I'm just editing now. There are a few things I didn't write in the script originally, so here we go. Some last minute edits included fixing some anatomy. It's a little minor thing, but I don't have proper video recording of those, so you have to take my word for it. Madison's arm was especially janky. I mean, jankier than it originally should be. Wait, what? Did I forget to write in the script that Madison has her scars? Yes, without any serious spoilers, she has a scar on her throat and on her arm that were not there in the episode we got to know her if you know what I mean. And now I wonder what else I missed while writing the script and recording it. Wednesday's eyes were originally closed, but I decided that it's not the time to finally figure out how to make closed eyes. I'm really bad at them, to the point I literally never made a single closed eye I was happy with, which is mostly true to open eyes I made, but this was a little bit more than that. In the end, I actually prefer them looking at each other, so it was a nice change after all. Also, tiny composition trick was adding that red bra to the drawer in the bottom right side. I needed that because it balances out the composition, because there were just way too many red elements on the other side of the picture, so it had to be added. So it's not aggressively drawing your eyes towards one side of the piece. I just need to have one more phone call. Just give me a second. Okay. The, the the sun is coming up right like it's the it's the last day of the month what do you mean that i procrastinated on another week before making this thing uh, i'm not checking you know i'm not checking i don't trust you with stuff like that i managed to finish this video on the 29th day i mean i haven't edited the video yeah that's that's a, that's a bit of a mess but you know how it goes you're just a disembodied imaginary person who i'm talking to through a phone that is not even turned on so tough luck unscripted meta jokes for the win and with that i thank you very much for watching have a nice day create something even if it includes creating some strange fandom crossover that nobody but you cares about but most importantly don't forget to have fun while doing that farewell